1940 Philco radio model 40-217 and this is in fairly nice shape this little handle right here screws right here I took it off for transportation but yeah the wood is in really good shape except down here at the bottom it needs needs a little help it's a little torn up down here at the bottom but otherwise after we resurrect this guy and do an analysis and go through it it is up for adoption so if you're interested in adopting this I will pass it along for what I paid for it which is about the same as a couple gallons of gasoline these days so it has some preset options here and you'll see these in the back and you can see it was from the other side of the Mississippi of course being in Los Angeles this is K territory shortwave police broadcast remote and I don't see a, re a, a way to change between these pre-selects unless there was a remote control and you could jump that I don't have anyway bass treble volume tuning and it works it works smooth is quite a classy radio it's very big check that out I love this, someone put a, a freaking appliance cord on it. Yeah, 15 amps. I, I love this right here. This is, this is freaking brutal. Man, why? 40-217, code 121. There's a look at the chassis. See if I can get us a little light here. Uh, the gentleman I got this from said that it worked and he loved to watch the tubes glow or it kind of worked on AM. Uh, you really don't want to use something of this era without recapping it. That's a period. You don't want to use something from this era without recapping it, period. We got a Loctal back there. It's got a lot of tubes in it. High Farad Dry Electrolytic. Now, this is kind of interesting. I see three transformers here. But what is in this box? Is this full of dried out paper capacitors, shorted paper capacitors? Um, these are the pre-selects. So you have an oscillator trimmer and an antenna trimmer. We do have some rotten wiring Although this, this looks good, and that's what, a 12? So we got a big antenna here. This coil. And we have some type of antenna here. And of course, being Philco, it's going to have its gimmicky side to it. Turn for quietest position. 
for best results and your favorite stations. Here's the, um, see if I can get in on this real close. There's your tube chart. It's got an 80 and two number 42s. Hundred and eighty watts. Wow. Hundred and eighty watts. Talk about a current guzzler. So right there are the the lights for the different preset stations. But I don't quite see how that works yet. Let's take a look. So this says near, near and extreme. So I wonder if this is like an RF gain control. And then over here we have, let's see, I bet this camera will actually zoom in on that. You don't know how small that is. That's incredible, this. So we have antenna ground. We have this. Where does this go? Oh, there's another antenna up here. I see a trimmer capacitor right in there. See it right here? So it's got three antennas in it. I have no idea where this goes. It's got an antenna in the top and then it's got two antennas in the bottom or whatever this thing is. just makes me happy to rotate something cardboard that's on bearings. It's the new therapeutic stimulatory rototwebulator fidget tweebler. Just it's lit. Look at the size of the wheel. So I'm still curious about how this works right here. Because this, these connections here, these go, are going down. Look at, what is that? What is this thing? Philco and their gimmicky crap, man. What what am I missing here? This thing looks like it slides. I, I don't get it. Is there an adjustment up front? So it does 550 kilohertz. Looks like almost continuous. No, there's a gap to 18 megahertz. It does be basically 550 to 1.5, 1 1.5 .5, 1 .5 to 3.5, and then six to six to 18.
of course they printed that on there and none of it exists so there's really no detent here this is just smooth rolling and the volume is only rotates a little bit if we come back here and look at the volume control so what do we got going on with this Over here, how, how does this volume control work? What am I missing here? You would think you would just rotate that pot right there, but you can't rotate the pot. Oh boy, I'm in over, in over my head here with the gimmicks. We're just two knobs, tuning and volume. Too complicated for a simple man. I mean, I, I guess I appreciate that you cleaned it, but I would almost rather have it totally virgin. I can't read that. It's just like a 5U4. I wonder if this thing is like super low use. So let's see here, Philco 40-217. Um, Twelve dash twenty-six. This is these are the riders right here. So and you know I work on so much of this stuff that. I just have all of the riders in my phone. So, as well as the paper copies. Let's see, what was it? 12. Okay, let me find it here. All right, what do we got here? RF amp, detector oscillator, IF. Wow, look at the IF frequencies, 470. Be fun to try and adjust this to 454. So this is just almost like an AA5 with a push pull. Well, where do all the extra tubes come in? Okay, here are the, all those lamps. Here are all the pre-selects and all the motor. So this is all that stepper crap to go from one, the presets. Thyrotron. Isn't a Thyrotron radioactive? I'm going to have to uh, send a message to... I thought Thyrotron was radioactive. Had a radioactive tickler in it. We have to get the Geiger counter out on this situation.
anyway there it is it's really just a, a kind of a all-american five style with an rf amp so it's got your converter your if your avc first audio detector and then push pull audio output and then it's got all this gimmicky crap down here you know filco just they just from the get-go it was just decent play school just yeah uh, you know this one has a little bit of quality to it though this isn't like the plastic crap they made later this is this is a nicely built wood cabinet really i mean it's kind of gimmicky i guess the look of it here we, here i go with my personal input i mean i guess some people could say it looks kind of cheesy but it's well built i mean like like this part right here right with these with these things right here what's the what are those supposed to look like teeth what's the point of that yeah i mean this would be a definite definitely a beautiful display piece you'd have to clean the speaker hole the dust since apparently the gentleman i got this from was using it i'm gonna start off i don't know if this is a two or three hundred watt bulb but here we go Well, you know, when this thing don't have no, oh. Works. Yeah, I don't understand this volume control. But at a whisper, it cranked the gain up on the camera here, let you hear it. Probably getting more wind noise than anything, but. Well, it gets K and X. You can get K and X with a piece of galena and two wires. Huh. Okay, I think I made a mistake here. I believe that that potentiometer right there is for the tone control. That's the tone control potentiometer, and it runs through 
And that switch right there is the volume up down. It's like it's a stepper motor. Was this thing, did this thing have a remote? Like a early Zenith TV, you know, like an early version of the Zenith Space Command where the the volume was a stepper motor that would go through three or four stepped resistors. That's almost like what this seems like. This had a remote control that went with it, didn't it? See, I think that's supposed to click it up one or down one to the next. Okay, we need to tear this apart. Well, apparently this might have an actual wireless remote that goes with it. So it's time to dig out the real literature here that isn't all compressed into a crappy, super low resolution PDF and do some research. But when they say remote, wireless remote, like that's what one of those extra antennas in this thing is for the wireless remote. I know someone's been screaming that the whole time, but in 1940, you wouldn't automatically assume that the thing used a wireless remote. So let me read, do some reading here and see if I can understand what this is all about. I'll let you pause that and read it if you want. In the second paragraph, the wireless remote control will automatically tune in eight broadcast stations, increase and decrease volume and turn off the radio without any connection between the set and the control unit. The built-in super aerial system eliminates an outside aerial and ground included in the built-in super aerial system is a statically shielded loop for broadcast band reception and a, eh, you can read it automatic volume control continuous variable tone control bass compensation this thing is way ahead of its time here's the remote control schematic so it used a 45 volt battery a number 30 tube and a three volt battery. So what frequency did this work on? I wonder. How the hell did this, did it continuously transmit? Boy, talk about a gimmick. Look at my 1940 radio with the wireless remote control. I gotta find a picture of this. Okay, so this has gotta be the remote control receiver. Uh, that's the red and white wire right there that we saw going to that big loop that would have been right on the floor. And then this section right here is the remote control receiver. Wow, what a unique piece of radio. I wonder if the reason why it uses a weird IF frequency is because of this. Two A four G. Wow.
Wow, wow, wow. Wow. So this is the remote antenna right here, which is this coil that goes around the base. That's what picks up and whatever this is, that's what picks up the wireless remote. So this cardboard thing and this up here must be the uh, regular um, RF antennas. We're gonna try and find a picture of that remote. We're not gonna be able to, and, and the motor must be inside here. This is where the stepper motor must be. Hopefully we can get the volume control stepper part to work. We're not going to be able to do the channel change thing without the remote. So that right there must be the remote. That box sitting on top of it. Wow, wouldn't that be something to have? Here's a picture of the remote. I found it on AR15.com. Imagine that. And here's what Radio Museum shows. This is continuing with the AR15.com. There's a look inside the remote control transmitter. I would include a link to this, but it might get the video's listing screwed up. So if you just Google Philco 40-216 with the remote AR15.com, you'll see this guy uh, talking about his restoration project of this set. This is pretty interesting. He goes into quite quite a bunch of depth here. That's some good language. Yeah, this is very interesting. Okay, enough of this. It's time for me to tear into this thing. You know what? Who besides Philco would put mystery pack on the inside of a remote control inside of an electronic device? Who would do that? You know, I don't want to copy this guy's pictures directly. That would not be fair without permission. But there it is. They're here nearly every day. They're constantly trying to intimidate and badger our employees. We've had protesters follow staff home. Carl Eastland of Planned Parenthood in Spokane. Tom Foley, CBS News, Washington. President Biden calls it a sad day for the court and the country. CBS's Nancy Cordes at the White House on what Mr. Biden plans to do. Directing the Department of Justice to protect women from being punished by their home state if they seek an abortion out of state. Second, he has directed the Department of Health and Human Services to expand access to... W-E-N-R. Okay, I'll just leave that alone. I took you through my discovery process of what this radio is, which is fairly unusual. So today we're going to dig into the actual operation of it and try and get it to work a little bit better and just go through and kind of resurrect it. Now, a couple corrections. I talked about this using a stepper motor like the Zenith uh, Space Command series used in a stepped volume control that had like four or five volumes and that is not correct. It uses a motor. If you follow this dotted line here, it comes up to a regular potentiometer. See that dotted line there? That means that the motor is connected to this potentiometer. So it is continuous, continuously variable. I think that's what they call that. Um, the Thyrotron is a gas-filled relay type tube. It, this is the remote circuit, it is used to activate 
these solenoids here which step the channel and we're going to get into that we'll see that the volume is not working i have a feeling the motor's frozen and there's a couple capacitors i'm interested in here which would be that one right there that 0 0.03 coupling capacitor if that's leaky it's going to cause these output tubes to overheat and this is fairly interesting how they did this they didn't use a phase inverter they drove into one tube and then they pulled the opposite phase off of the screen of that tube and coupled it down to the grid so if this capacitor here is leaky 59 or if this capacitor here this 0 0.03 is leaky that will cause uh, a lot of problems so we want to check those and we want to check the motor we just want to try and get it to work so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the pull the chassis out here take some pictures of how all this is hooked up and then I'll yank the chassis and we'll take a look at the bottom I do have a feeling this has been replaced interesting there two hidden screws behind the face plate I'm trying to be extremely gentle with this because this is that wire that likes to crack and turn into dust the insulation so I'm really trying to prevent that look at this freaking dial cord one two three four it's like two meters of cord here could you even buy a single piece this long anymore only Philco all right here's where the good stuff is so that can is right here so the motor these are your presets your oscillator and your antenna trimmer and there is your presets selector switch that the motor in the can turns okay isn't that cool this is where the hell did they get this at the party store And that is just tacked on using line zip cord directly onto the original one of the original electrolytics. They should have they should have cut that old electrolytic out because those are known to short. So that would have to be remedied. It does not look like our paper capacitors have been changed and just to satisfy the internet trolls if you're going to use this radio every single one of these capacitors has to be changed all of these paper wax so right here is our volume control and check this out is this cool or what like a clutch Well,
This is old school right here. I love that old resistor. Is that a replacement? This here must be the band switch. So where's, is this where the detent is supposed to be that's missing right there? And there's supposed to be a little ball there that drops into some notches. Looks like the little ball is missing. Hmm. Anyway, we need to power this up and see if this motor runs when I push that switch. I don't know if it has a capacitor that works in conjunction with that motor. I don't even know if it's turning the volume control, but yeah, it's just a regular volume power switch that's driven by an electric motor, a reversible electric motor. Okay, it's plugged in and without the speaker, uh, we don't have any B plus because we don't have the field coil. But I'm gonna rock this switch and we'll see what this motor does. Well, it looks like it's trying to turn. And it's not frozen. Oh, you know what? It's not engaged. So I'm going to need two hands. Let me give it power and see if it's frozen. No, it's not frozen at all. It's, um, it feels like a, a, what a split phase capacitor motor with a bad capacitor. It just hums and it doesn't have the other phase to get it to turn. Without even looking at the schematic, this thing looks guilty has two wires coming out of it. All right, here's the motor. I see a 30 microfarad there that's connected to directly to two coils of the motor. Uh, we got two point ones. I'm suspicious of that 30. Thirty microfarad, number eighty-six, and it looks like that one I'm suspicious of is number eighty-six. This one. Let's unbolt that and see if we get some numbers on it. Thirty microfarad, thirty volt, sixty cycle. Okay, these are the right type of capacitors. 70 microfarad 440 AC. This one is pretty close, but yeah, I don't know about this one. This one is 25 at something. 25, 25 at 370. This one is 13 at 1200. Ooh, max torque. Let's try this one. No PCBs, combustible fluid, and it's leaking. It's leaking its combustible fluid, and it stinks. It's probably mineral oil. So I'm going to bridge this one in here, and I bet that motor runs. Look at this. Would that even mount in there? Could just, like, have this sitting in the case. All right, here we go. 
I'm gonna finger it here. There you go. Ooh, I think that turned it off. Hear it click? It clicked on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. We have, we have happy. We make happy. I want to. I'm gonna try this one. See if this is any good. Actually, it is, and it runs a hell of a lot faster. Yeah. Should we try the 70? I would think it would. It's a frequency sync motor right or is it a DC no it's got to be a so I would think it would speed limit at whatever the sync frequency to 60 Hertz was okay here we go with a 70 microfarad oh yeah that's that's hauling ass I like it. Yes, all of this rubber wi rubber wiring, rubber wiring is brittle and if you just touch it it cracks and some of it is already cracking without being touched. So, could you recap it and get away with using it? Yes, if you recap it very, very gently and don't start moving these wires around. It's weird as this is supple. This is supple. But you can see this green and white one here. That this is brittle. Of course, the cloth covered stuff is okay. But all the rubber, a lot of this stuff, I guess depending on who the supplier was, is brittle. Like this. See what I mean? It's hard as a rock. It just snaps like glass. Okay, I should probably spray the volume control while I'm in here. It's going to be pretty hard to rotate it back and forth, but I can spray it anyway. I'm going to check for leakage across these capacitors. I've already marked them out. So this is the first one. So we have negative 13 volts on that side. We have positive 118 on that side. That don't look bad. On this one we have uh, 244 on that side and negative 17 on that side. So this has a can dome network that, that creates a negative voltage to bias the output tube. So I don't, I don't think that's a problem. Negative 13 on one and negative 17 on the other. The grid being 13 volts negative, I, I'm sure they're leaky, but I don't think it's worth worrying about. We should have um, some audio here, and we don't. Uh, let me see, where are the electrolytics? Where is that dry electrolytic? That is right here. So let's see what we got. 
got 262 volts here. Let's see how much AC we have. Point 0.2, 200 millivolts AC. So that does not look like a bad filtering. Let's see what we got over here on this beautiful. I don't even know what you'd want to call this. We have 356 DC. And we have 1. 0.1 volt AC. Not bad filtering. Um, but we, the thing is deaf. It's not doing anything. We have a very hot audio section. What a lot of bass. Just have nothing from the front end. Abortion law banning the procedure after 15 weeks is set to take effect in 90 days. More from CBS's Steve Futterman. Throughout the U.S., in most major cities, people angry with the decision to the streets. This decision must not stand. Legal abortion on demand. The protests were emotional. We are the majority. For those here in California, of course, the impact of the ruling will be far less than in other states. Here, the right to have an abortion remains part of state law. But this woman says even in California, obtaining an abortion can be difficult. Everybody's like, California, we're fine. You know, not everyone lives in Los Angeles and San Francisco. Steve Futterman, CBS News, Los Angeles. In Arkansas, a 2019 bill effectively bans abortion in the state. Attorney General Leslie Rutledge supports the Supreme Court ruling. Roe was wrong on that day, and it has been wrong every day. I don't know. President Biden signs a fiercely contested gun violence bill. Time. The RF, the, that's the RF amp. The converter and IF are underneath this. I wanted to check the voltages. Could be a shorted capacitor, bad too, but can't really get to it. Ah, I see now. These are the IF alignment points. That's the IF tube. This is the RF amp right here. This is the detector. So all of this from here over this is all that remote. It's the Thyrotron, which we should check and see if it's radioactive. Um, some apparently some of them aren't. Some of them some of them are gas filled. Some of them are gas filled with a tickler in them because they they they're like a relay. They conduct. They they're not a linear amplifier type thing. So very interesting. Needs very much restoration. Love TLC from somebody. Okay, so eight to ten is about background for here. Let's let's see. I I don't think there's anything hot in this radio. I think this is an argon filled. Yeah. Yeah, this thing would be going absolutely nuts if there was any kind of radioactivity from those tubes. Here's an old smoke alarm. This is background.
Absolutely. I don't like this. I, I don't like this motorized volume control. I don't like it. It's too slow. Inflammation scan, neuro seven nerve test, X ray, MRI review, and a knee surgery prevention plan. Normally three hundred and seventy five dollars, but today just ninety seven dollars for the first. Not bad for not changing anything. Oh, here we go. Absolutely. That's going to be copyright tip. Oh, there's uh, K Mozart. It's got too much bass. Let's see, shortwave. Police. Which one's police? So we want shortwave. We want to see if we can get the time check. You know, this might need a separate long wire antenna for shortwave. I don't know. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yeah, I, I don't expect anything. In California, que muchísimos abogados When you're talking about Boneyard Bistro. Now, um, Aaron, let's back up uh, a little bit. To measurable human suffering. I love I human up. suffering. <laughs> let's find a weak station. This is. Now, let's tweak. Kind of just fading out on its own right now. This is the wrong way to do this. Should be doing this with a signal generator on 470. suffering there's a pretty weak one doesn't seem to really do much does it
I'm looking at where the dust is in order to put it back. Yeah, this doesn't have enough hyaluronic acid. So there's RF amp is right here. Oh, I said that already. IF amp detector. I, I guess it's not bad. I am not going to do anything to it because I am... There it goes fading out again. Do we have a tube here that's not making good contact? Not enough hyaluronic acid. There we go. I'm going to leave it the way it is because I'm really hoping someone will adopt it and fully restore it. Too bad the remote doesn't exist, but you might be able to find that. That is something that you could find that could be shipped from anywhere in the country. The radio, not so much so. Watch the uh, light right there. Too freaking slow. Let me go into high sensitivity so you can get the full audio experience. And here we go. Volkswagen Jettas forever, and uh, the older ones, 2004, 2006 models. Diesel anyway, uh, Yes, sir. Real good luck with them. We're looking to possibly upgrade and get into something newer. And the whole things are blocked there, and you're back up before you get to the upper. All right. I've had fun with this one. I learned quite a bit, actually, which is stimulating uh, like I said at the beginning of the video this is looking for a new home I don't have room for it here I don't have the passion to fully restore this thing and I'm hoping somebody does it's pretty clean it's pretty complete it's too bad I don't have that remote thing um, but it's still a nice display piece and after being recapped and all the other stuff it needs it probably uh, would work fairly well uh, this is this is a very interesting unit with this motorized volume control which I hate because it's too damn slow the phone rings and you have to tell them hold on for 30 seconds while your radio turns down it's really annoying but let's do the typical channel sweep which is this thing's not gonna set any records right now so Independence. Yes. So, I mean, we had Memorial Day, Labor Day. The fourth is Independence Day, and it's always celebrated. and all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord.
Man, that just sounds creepy with the rumbling bass on this thing. And I am freaking out. I'm like, before we run out of time, let's talk about chicken because we know you're known for your barbecue, but freedom from doubt on the legal issue I cannot share. I'm not sure a ban on terminating a pregnancy from the moment of conception. Life that I need to lead an abundant life with you. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason to want, you know, what, 35, between our two houses. And they're lovely people, by the way. I don't misunderstand. It's not like there's a... It's not too bad, but it's not setting any kind of records either. Turns it down. Play. He about to be MVP. He leads the majors. And home he about to be about MVP. Me want to be MVP too. Uh, you have a duty to have a crappy. You don't have a. You, you have the right to have a crappy house. I do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? You know. I mean, you can't force that issue. Carmen. Hello, Carmen. Welcome. So if we go to police. So shortwave is working because this I'm at the very top of the uh, you know, unwritten rights that were understood to exist in 1868 when that amendment was adopted. I'm look. Oh, there it is. This is only a test. This is a test. This is a test. This is only a test. This is only a test. There it is. Today is a great day testing. Testing. This is only a test. So right now I'm in the what they call the police band, which is. 1.5 to 3.6 so I'm if this is accurate I'm at about 1700 right now so it is working Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> 